Okay, this annoyed me. I bought this Chinese electronic group set here a few months back and it worked flawlessly for, for about two weeks. The front derailleur completely died on me. So why did it go wrong? Can we fix it? Or should I just throw this whole group set in the bin? My name, as always, is Luke and welcome back to Trace Valley. Okay, quick recap. The L2 ERX is the first electronic road bike group set to come from a Chinese manufacturer at around five to 600 quid. It is great value and was set to rival the likes of Shimano DI2 and SRAM ETAP. I loved it and it was working absolutely fine until the moment I unplugged the front derailleur to sort out another issue on the bike. Upon plugging it back in, the next day, the rear derailleur was fine, but the front was completely dead for seemingly no reason at all. I spent hours and tried all sorts to kind of remedy and fix the situation. Here's a list of what I did. <laughs> TLDR, <laughs> nothing worked. The front derailleur buzzes when you plug it in but that is all you get, no other movement. Now, a few days ago, I got this in the, in the post. It is a brand new ERX group set. So by swapping parts in and out, I'm gonna figure out exactly where the problem is. So let's begin with the obvious. Okay, so the bike this was all on is, yeah, it's in pieces at the minute. So I've removed the stuff here to make my life a little bit easier. The shifters are still on the bike, but they're wireless, like the SRAM ETAP system. All they do is pass a Bluetooth signal to shift and I can mimic that with the app anyway. So with all the original stuff, I've still got exactly the same issue. So the rear derailleur works absolutely fine. No problems. Front derailleur is completely dead no movement but i've got some new cables here so let's swap these in okay new cables in rear derailleur works absolutely fine front derailleur no change yeah same old story next contender new battery okay brand new battery housing and new batteries basically fully charged hopefully you can see that rear derailleur Yep, works fine. Front derailleur. No bueno. Next contender. Brand new front derailleur. Okay, new battery, new cables, new front derailleur. This is the only original part and rear derailleur works absolutely fine. <laughs> front derailleur, surprise, surprise still completely dead, exactly the same symptoms. Also, just to make sure I cover all the bases, I've got the, I've got the shifters here. So this is the rear derailleur. No problems at all. And the front derailleur, still dead. Also, just to be clear, the front derailleurs here, they have no receivers in them. The brains of the operation are all housed in the rear derailleur and the signals to shift are passed over these wires. So next up, I'm gonna piece together the whole new group set and swap in these old parts to kind of check my working as it were. Okay, so new shifters, new rear derailleur, and then I've got new front derailleur batteries and cables there. So let's piece all this together. Okay, all brand new parts here. And I've just paired up the shifters and so let's wake the group set up. So rear derailleur. All good, front derailleur. Back in business. So let's swap in the old parts. Okay, so I've, I've plugged in the old front derailleur here. here. Here is the new one. So in fact, we've got old battery, old front derailleur, old cables and wake up the group set here. Rear derailleur, absolutely fine. Front derailleur, yeah, this, I bet this is gonna work, right? Yeah, of, of course. It works fine. So, like, what, what is the problem here? We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. So as many of you lot will know, I wear Sirocco cycle clothing on every ride that I do and have done for a number of years now. They make some awesome stuff to suit every budget and this is my go-to outfit right now. 
J1 jacket on the top. This thing is awesome. I've had it nearly two years and it still looks brand new, really. Keeps the rain off, looks really slick, and it's super comfortable out on the bike. On the bottoms, I've got their BX Envelaria bib tights. Super comfortable padding, keeps you nice and warm on the bike. And you can't forget the socks. Booyah. Now with spring around the corner. What I meant to say, autumn is just around the corner. You might want to check out this, one of their M4 long sleeve cycle jerseys. Again, super comfy, looks wicked, and it's got these really deep pockets at the back to carry all your stuff. Their jerseys are also super nice. This one here is definitely one of my favorites. And if the weather's a bit chilly outside, you can also pair it with some arm warmers and a cycle vest as well. So yeah, if you want to grab some stuff, use my link in the description down below. It helps me out a little bit around here and it'll get you 10% off the entire site. They got all sorts of cool stuff. So yeah, check them out. Um, anyway, thank you for listening and let's get back to it. Okay, so um, <laughs> I'm sat here trying to sort of mull over this problem and I think it, well, it's, it's got to be one of two things, right? So firstly, a hardware issue. So we've already established the original parts, the front derailleur cables and battery. They're all fine. The issue has to lie with the original rear derailleur here. So something is preventing it from sending the proper signal over to the front derailleur to shift. So potentially maybe one of the traces on the circuit board in here has gone bad. And that could be water ingress, right? Because you can see that bolt is lightly rusted there from where I did my wet weather testing. What I will say about that is that it was working absolutely fine before I unplugged the front derailleur and, and kicked all these, <laughs> these issues off. And up to that point, it had been well over a week since I'd done any wet weather testing. So this whole setup had been dry and working fine for a week. And then for it to randomly go bad overnight because of water ingress problems, I find that quite unlikely. What's more likely in my opinion is, well, it, it being a software problem because you can imagine there's you know, relatively complicated software running these things. So maybe if you unplug the front derailleur at the wrong time, it fires off a fail safe and then it prevents, prevents it from shifting. So that's where my money is actually. And on that point, I have something to test with this new group set. Right, I'll, um, I'll save you a bit of time here. I'm, I'm just waffling on about testing this specific scenario to see if I can get this new group set to fail in the same way that the old one did. But here's the outcome. All right, well that did absolutely nothing. Still works. <laughs> Still, that's completely fine, so yeah, no idea. So in my opinion, it does seem quite a lot like a software issue, but in order to properly rule out, you know, water ingress and, and corrosion and, and what have you, let's rip apart the rear derailleur. So all things considered, taking the broken rear derailleur apart was relatively Straightforward. Having said that, pretty early on, I did stab myself in the fingers. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, put, I put some gloves on. Now, nothing was permanently pinned or glued in place, which is really nice to see actually. And after taking out two of the four pins, I got the derailleur assembly removed. Now, this little nugget is the, it's the whole brains of the operation. It has a nice aluminium housing around it to protect from bumps and scrapes. Three screws will remove that, so let's crack this open. I was really interested to see what the weatherproofing was like. Again, three small screws and we're in. So I had a really good look inside. Absolutely zero evidence of water ingress or corrosion. I initially thought some water would have got in via the cable plug, but turns out this is actually epoxied in, so it would be really solid and completely waterproof. You might also see a red silicon gasket around the edge and even a silicon seal around the charging port. Honestly, I was pretty impressed. L2 have made a decent attempt to keep water out of here. So <laughs> I got out my jeweler's eyeglass and went hunting for popped resistors or any corroded traces on the circuit board. Again, nothing. I even had a good look at the soldered wires. Yeah, no problems from what I can see. Doesn't look like any water got in and the circuit board looks pristine. So uh, yeah, I, I put it all back together. And just to make sure I did everything correctly, I plugged it back into the group set. So we've got new cables, new battery, new front derailleur and let's get this plugged in and it's working up so can we connect right so the rear yeah fine 
No problems there. Front. Dead. Still completely dead. Exactly the same as before. <laughs> Slightly annoying. So <laughs> one, one, of, one of the things that brings me great joy, actually, is, is finding issues like this and then being able to provide a fix or at least give you some advice about how to kind of avoid the problem in the first place. But with this issue, yeah, no can do. Although I believe it's a software issue, I can't be certain, nor can I recreate the problem on the new group set. So <laughs> if you have any idea what it is, leave me a comment. I am all ears. Now on the bike, I've kept my original shifters, front derailleur, cables, and battery. The only thing that I've replaced is the rear derailleur here. Now I've been riding it for the last few days. Here's the verdict. Okay, so yeah, we, we are back in business. The bike feels absolutely phenomenal again. The shifting at the front is completely sorted, completely solid, so really happy with that. And I forgot just how good this bike is when everything's working. So really, really chuffed with it. Let's see, let's see how long it lasts. So yeah, it's really good, but until I have a definitive reason or explanation, possibly with some steps to avoid this problem in the future, I don't know if I can fully trust this group set. Now I asked L2 if they had any input, they had, they had nothing else to add. Now to their credit, they do offer a two year warranty and will replace any defective parts. And from what I hear, they, they are honoring that as well. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be riding this group set all through the English winter, rain or shine, and we will see if it survives. I'm not, I'm not particularly confident it will, to be honest with you, but maybe this whole issue I faced is a complete one-off and this thing will be 100% perfect from now on. Um, time will tell, I guess. Anyway, get subscribed. I've got so much cool stuff in the works and very quickly, how cool is my new neon sign in the background? Let me just move my bike quickly. So yeah, how cool does that look? I'm so, so chuffed with it. My, um, my wife bought it for me to say sort of congratulations for reaching 100,000 subbies, which is, yeah, really, really lovely. And I'm so chuffed with it. I, yeah, I keep switching the lights off just to kind of look at it because I'm a massive loser. Um, anyway, uh, for those wondering, by the way, I mentioned a few videos ago that I'm, I'm gonna have a little baby. She was due three days ago. So she is officially fashionably late. Um, so <laughs> she could arrive this evening, who knows? Um, anyway, that's the, that's the update <laughs> complete. Uh, and that's the end of the episode. So I'm gonna switch off the lights and uh, spend half an hour just um, looking at my sign. Right, see you later, ciao! Zah.